One evening I was talking with the John Fu, and a topic came up of some local teenagers who had been showing some extreme disrespect for their parents. And John Fu made an interesting comment. He said that willingness to show respect is a sign of intelligence. It's the smart people who show respect. That struck me, because I thought back to my high school days, and the attitude among the kids seemed to be the smart kids were the ones who showed disrespect. It may be smart in one way, but it's not really intelligent. Because after all, if you show disrespect to other people, if they have something of value to tell you, to teach you, they're not going to be inclined to want to tell you. So you're closing off an avenue by which you can gain knowledge, gain the benefit of their experience. For the monks, it's even a rule. If someone criticizes you, if you show disrespect, you commit an offense. Now, you don't have to agree with them. But the Buddha said, even in cases where the other person is wrong, you don't show disrespect. Because just because that person is wrong now doesn't mean he or she will always be wrong. So it's good to think about what it means to show respect. You show you that care about the other person's opinions. You care about that person's well-being. And you respect whatever knowledge that person might have. That gives you access to the knowledge. They're more likely to share. And if you show respect for their well-being, they're more likely to show respect for yours. If you treat them like garbage people, they might treat you like garbage. We had the chat just now on respect for the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. What that means in the practice is that you don't try to change them right away, what the Buddha says. You try to change yourself to see if, if, if by fitting into the Dharma you benefit. And we show respect for the Buddha because he basically has us show respect to ourselves. Look inside yourself. What is it that you feel is most, most worthy of respect? And he would say it's your desire for true happiness with the realization that true happiness can't harm other beings if it's going to last. There's a story in the canon. There's a king who was up in his private apartment with his queen. And in a tender moment, he turns to her and says, is there anyone you love more than yourself? And being a king, he's probably expecting her to say, yes, Your Majesty, I love you more than I love myself. The queen says, no. There's nobody I love more than I love myself. And how about you? Is there anyone you love more than you love yourself? The king has to admit that there's nobody he loves more than himself. So that's the end of the tender scene. The king goes down to see the Buddha, reports the conversation, and the Buddha says, you know, she's right. You could search the whole world over and not find anyone that you love more than you love yourself. But then the Buddha's lesson from that is interesting. It's not that you should just go abuse other people or disrespect them or mistreat them. Because after all, he says, they love themselves just as fiercely as you love yourself. So the lesson he draws from that is never harm anyone or cause them to co cause harm. In other words, you have to respect their desire for true happiness, too. So looking for your true happiness is not a selfish thing. It's something you want to do wisely. Now, the world out there will oftentimes tell you that you know, true happiness is not possible. The effort that goes into it is a waste. But a lot of them have something they want to sell you instead. So they're not really showing you respect. All those advertisements that say you would look pretty if you wore this, or you would look attractive if you drove that car, or if you bought this or bought that. They're not showing you any respect. They're trying to go straight for your greed, aversion, delusion. So 
So you have to resist their message. This is why we try to keep the Buddhist teachings in mind. He says true happiness is possible. And sometimes it comes by having to do without. But you gain a lot. He says there's greater happinesses and lesser happinesses in life. And the wise person realizes that there's sometimes when you have to give up the lesser happiness for the sake of the greater one. But it's a good trade. Think of it as, as if you're playing a game of chess. You can't hold on to all your pieces and win. You've got to be willing to sacrifice some of the pieces, and then you can come out winning. So you have to look in your life what's really valuable and what's not. And show respect for your desire for true happiness, and show respect for any teaching that would help you in that way. And that's why we, the chant we just had just now says, so respect for the Dharma, respect for the training, respect for concentration, respect for heedfulness. That means the realization that there are dangers out there in the world. You don't pretend that they're not. But you can avoid those dangers if you develop skills. And so you want to learn those skills. If you try to pretend that there are no dangers out there at all, you're going to get hit over the head pretty easily by all kinds of unexpected things. But if you prepare beforehand, you can be confident. You know the skills. And when a danger comes up, you're not blown away by it. So we practice for the sake of the dangers that can come. One of our other chances, may you look after yourself with ease. That doesn't mean simply may you just meet with nice things all the time. But it means that when difficulties come up in life, may you have the skills to handle them properly. That means you've got to train yourself. And meditation is part of that training. When you stay here with the breath, and you keep reminding yourself, okay, stay with the breath, stay with the breath, don't forget, that's mindfulness. And you should develop your mindfulness, then other lessons that you've learned in life will be easy to keep in mind. When you're with the breath, Sense the breath as it is, right here in the body, right here, right now, without a lot of stories and other things that would pull you away. That's alertness. You see what you're doing. And again, as you try to master the skills of life, you want to see clearly what are you doing. So if something happens that was the result of your actions, you know why. You know what you did. All too often we're doing things and our minds are half here and half someplace else. So our actions only get half of our attention, if that. And when the results come, we can't really be sure you know, where they came from, because we don't even know what we did, or we have a confused notion of what we did. So, But if you learn how to be alert, fully alert to the whole body as you breathe in, the whole body as you breathe out, you learn to be alert all around. And as you stick with this, you develop the quality called ardency. Ardency is what keeps you going. Now it's fired by that quality we also called heedfulness. You can't let up in your desire for true happiness. And you have to realize that it's going to come through your actions. So you have to be very careful about what you do. And if you see anywhere where there's a weakness in your actions, you're happy to do what you can to make up for the weakness. Where there are strengths, you try to maintain them. Respect your abilities. Respect your skills. So this is why we start out with respect for those who know, respect for those who have gone beyond us. They can teach us an awful lot. Now there's a lot of new information that comes in the world all the time. And oftentimes younger people are ahead of the older people in terms of the information. But in terms of values, what's really important in life? What it means to be heedful. What you've got to do in order to be happy regardless of what the information is. That kind of knowledge comes with time and experience. So we want to learn how to take advantage of other people's experience. 
because they have a lot to offer. And even if you show respect for someone you find out later it didn't deserve it, well, you haven't lost anything. At the very least, that person will appreciate your respect. And you have your own self-respect. In Thailand, there are many times that there's a rule among the monks that you have to bow down according to seniority, who, you know, who was ordained before you. You bow down to that person. And there's some monks who had seniority that I saw in their behavior was not the kind of behavior I respected. But I would still bow down as a sign that I was well trained. That kind of respect reflects back well in your teachers, respects, reflects well in your parents. And sure, by showing respect, you never lose. And if you show respect to the right people, in other words, instead of just showing the manners of respect, but you have a deep sense inside that you really do respect that other person, they'll show you the way to show true respect for yourself, that you are a person of worth, and your true happiness is possible, and it's not something to be ashamed of that you want true happiness. That that's the beginning of wisdom. And if you're able to find true happiness, you can be a lot more compassionate to other people, too. You, most of the people you see in the world who are harsh and unkind to one another is because they've been disappointed in their happiness. They feel they don't get any happiness. Why should anybody else have any? But when you find true happiness inside, you're more likely to think about other people's true happiness, see that that's worthwhile as well. Because you realize in your own quest for true happiness that it's going to require good qualities of the mind. It's not something you get by being greedy or by mistreating other people. I mean, there are pleasures you can get that way, but they don't last. The lasting ones are the ones that come from being good. Good in your generosity, good in your virtue, good in your meditation. And that's the kind of happiness that feels good deep down inside. It's a happiness that's worthy of respect. So have a strong sense that your happiness is something very worthwhile. Take it seriously, not in the sense of being grim, but in the sense of really wanting to do what's needed to be done. And that's when your attitude of respect shows its rewards.